Hello, friends. Again, we don't know if we went live the last time or not. We've been struggling with new equipment. This is what happens when you go and spend money on equipment. This is Angel Soriano. Welcome to today's segment of Ask the Dog Man on Facebook Live. We're just so glad to see you here. We get excited prepping for the show and all this. Anyway, uh, if you're new to the show, this is the show where we offer solutions to your canine behavior questions, overall training, etc., etc. We just you know, try, try to help out in any way possible, uh, which means uh, since this show is live, it just means that sometimes things go wrong. So just be tolerant if they do like they did the first minute here. We thought we were live and we may have been live and who knows what we said while we were there. So that, this one, this may make a good funny video later. Um, anyway, so here we are today. Uh, before we start, let me explain how you can engage with us. Just add your question to the comment section below and we'll attempt to answer them. You know, that, it's that easy actually. So do it now if you thought of it and if not, as we are talking and answering other questions that our producer has, has come up with already, uh, then uh, you can post your question at that point. So for now, do tell us if you can see us. Give us a thumbs up or a smiley or something just that you're hearing us and you can see us. That's important because, like I said, a few minutes ago, I don't think anybody could. Um, we'll move to the questions. I want to announce, though, um, a couple of things. One is that we have been blessed with growth, and because of it, we're looking to hire a couple of different trainers. So we truly, we're looking for two trainers. If you always wanted to train dogs and think you have some skills, or you know somebody that has skills, then contact, you know, give us a call, contact us, and um, we'll talk you through what our process is and we'd love to have you apply okay we're again looking looking to hire two people so it's that's exponential growth that we're going through right now and um, we just want to offer it and see who out there wants to do this so uh, now let's move on to some questions from the audience if we have them uh, our producer is going to tell us if we do he does have a list from earlier in the show from people emailing stuff so um, James, what do you have so far, live or not? All right, so this is from uh, one that was emailed in to us. Um, it says that um, regarding obedience, an obediently trained dog, um, it chooses, it picks and chooses when to ignore you and when to be obedient. Mm -hmm. How do you address these issues? Okay, okay. So, uh, as I understand that this dog kind of has a mind of his own. He just will listen to whatever he wants to. So so the bottom line on, on a situation like that, in my opinion, uh, simply is that truly this dog prob probably does not have the level of obedience I think they do, okay? Uh, normally, by the way, this happens a lot if you, if you deal in a treat-based environment. If you have a dog that has been uh, treated, basically, or received the treat, an edible uh, treat every time they did a function, they become very dependent on that, most of them do, and unless you wean them off and you do this properly, you end up with a dog that is really hooked on you know, treats. And as a result of it, they will act out or do their things properly when they have a treat or they smell a treat. Even if it's in your pocket, they'll do it because they expect it. Uh, by the way, if you're not a treat-based person and this is going on in your life, there's a good likelihood that is going on because your obedience is not as tight as you think it is. So what do you do? You increase it, right? You, you go to, if you're doing one session a week, then you do five sessions a week or seven sessions a week every day. By the way, five minutes a day worth of uh, obedience is going to go so long in your dog's life. Just think about how much you're doing today, right? So if you were to say, I'm going to do five minutes per day worth of obedience, and this, by the way, not complicated. Heel, sit, down, stay, come. Wow, right? Just repeat those over and over and over again and get tighter. If you think your dog is doing it, be quicker, right? The dog should be reacting as soon as you say it or even before you say it, you know, that level of anticipation. The sharper you get with obedience, the better it's going to get later on. And then this question or issue of, eh, he doesn't listen to me all the time, is going to go away simply because the dog starts respecting you a lot more. So hopefully that will help you. Go try it out. Uh, work, you know, five minutes a day until the next show and then give a status next week and be, or in two weeks when we hook up again. I, I just want to see how that goes. Good luck. What do you got? All right. So next up, we have uh, uh, Hi, Dog Man. Uh, I adopted a sweet three-year-old male pug from a rescue. Uh, when he first arrived, he was afraid of everything. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't play, let you pet him, or even eat out of a bowl. He's well. much better now, but still afraid of a couple of things. Okay. Um, specifically, like the sound of paper or plastic sacks rustling around. Yep. Um, he shies away and hides. Um, he's afraid of uh, a clock in the mm. chimes, 
Um, he cries, howls, barks, and goes nuts. Wow. Um, what can I do to help him get over these fears? I just want him to live a happy and fear-free life. Yeah. Boy, that's tough. Um, just the case itself, not necessarily the conditioning. But you're, you're dealing with a conditioning exercise here or several of them. Okay. Uh, anytime you end up with a dog that is has this to offer, there is a good reason that there... You know, there's probably probably some abuse in its past. Uh, couple this with the fact that maybe this dog already had some issues relative to, um, um, you know, confidence. Uh, who knows, right? And it could have been a nervy dog to start with. And as a result of it, uh, now you have that compounded by whatever abuse he received in its early life. So, so what do you do? I mean, that's the bottom line. You don't know what happened, so it's hard to undo it. But uh, what do you do going forward? Uh, the coaching is slow and methodical, okay? Everything you do, you basically change your pace. Um, you should really do any conditioning exercise in, in very small dosages, right? So if you have, uh, by the way, by the way, this crumbling of paper and popping and things like that, that happens from people. This is all training stuff that people used to teach, you know, to discourage a dog to make noises and to drop something or to, you know, do something that was, you know, uh, astronomically uh, challenging to the dog. And as a result of it, you ended up with a dog that may be afraid of it, especially if they're, if they don't have good confidence. So uh, what do you do going forward is you need to undo all this. So you need to get smaller. You need to get slower, right? So how do you do that? Everything you do, you need to do in a small bite sessions. You know, just take your time at it, plan it out ahead of time. If you're saying, hey, you know, he doesn't like my husband or he doesn't like my wife or whatever, then what you need to do is say, okay, let me introduce the husband or the wife to this dog in a very small, slow setting, right? So the person becomes smaller by getting on the ground and slower by just offering treats and let the dog come to them, not you know, don't follow the dog with a treat. Let the dog come to you. So it's a long road ahead. This really, um, everything you're describing here requires consultations. Just, I'm giving you the best I can in a, in a, in a public setting, but, uh, you know, slow is the way to approach any of these behaviors because they simply get worse when you try to go too quick. The problem is that in our societal, uh, uh, you know, the ways that we are, I'll put it that way. We just want everything quick and fast and it's not going to work. Okay. This is going to be something you have to take your time. on. So anyway, hopefully that helps, but do contact a professional. This is something that you need to be coached through. What else, Mr. James? All right. So Megan on Facebook, yeah. um, recently welcomed a daughter into their family. Cool. Uh, congratulations. Now five months old okay. and, uh, moving, making lots of noise. Um, mm -hmm. Dalmatian is great with older kids, however, uh, weary of their newborn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even to the point where she's growled at her. Any tips on how to help them have a safe and happy relationship? Yep. Yep. Quite a few of them. Okay. Uh, first of all, you kind of hit on something here. You said, hey, even growled at your new baby at a given time, maybe more than once. I don't know. But, uh, First of all, and I, and I have to say this, okay, just for legal reasons, the fact that your dog growl at your daughter, get the dog checked out by behaviors. The sooner the better. Just get it behind you. It's not the end of the world. You just need to know what's going on with your dog, okay? Now, outside of the legal repercussions then I have to, that I have to say, um, one is we need to promote your daughter. At five months of age, it's hard to promote her. I mean, she probably just gets around little by little. Uh, your dog's not used to this, obviously, right? So how do you promote? You promote by keeping your daughter, especially when you do these exercises, right? There should be no public ac access of this dog with your daughter, first of all. It should always be supervised. And when it is supervised, you should have your daughter nice and high above the dog. It's a good dominant stance to have, okay? It's just the fact that your daughter is five foot, six foot tall instead of your two foot dog. Um, do those exercises. Typically, we try to coach people in situations like this. If they're minor, we try to coach them into saying, hey, do a lot of obedience with the dog while you have your daughter above, right, at a good height. It's just starts promoting this little human into the person and the handler that this dog needs to think they are, regardless of whether or not they're able to. As the as the child becomes a little bit more able, then we start saying, hey, here's your two-year-old, grab the leash and walk the dog and, and have this little two-year-old say a command and, and then you make sure that it gets enforced. Over time, it'll get better. Right now at five months, you don't have many options besides you being the one that promotes the child. Start that as soon as possible, but more importantly, do 
you know, see, give us a call. You know, just call a professional. Make sure you get a good opinion on how to progress on this. It's not the end of the world. You should not look at it as this is a huge problem. It's it's just a conditioning problem that we need to get over. So, hopefully, that helps, Megan. Good luck. All right, so Mr. Producer, another one that was emailed in. Yes. Um, hello, dog man. Uh, is there anything I can do for uh, a dog that has separation anxiety? Ooh. Have a five-year-old dog that's always freaking out whenever I leave the house. <laughs> chews on everything, breaks out of crates when when I leave her in them. Uh, okay. Scratches doors, carpet, etc. Uh, okay. Any tips? Yep, quite a few. Uh, so separation anxiety. If truly that's the case, and it sounds like it's just by the way it was written, um, separation anxiety can be tough. It's one of the tougher issues outside of aggression. It's one of the tougher issues out there that we deal with on a normal basis. But it's again about conditioning. How do you condition? Well, you know, you got to condition this dog to be alone for three seconds. If that's possible, can then the dog be alone for five seconds? Can they be alone for 20 seconds? You understand how I'm going at this, right? It's, it's about progressing at a slow rate. You don't just say, I have to go to work for eight hours, so goodbye, right? It, it, that's not the way to do it. You, you basically take a weekend or a long weekend and say, let me progress the dog through this. Can I do it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Put a camera on them. You know, we all have one or two phones. Put a phone on them. Go take the other phone outside and see what is this dog doing? Only enter the room again or your house again when this dog quiets down or abandons the scratching or whatever. Don't reward the behavior of scratching, barking, carrying on like a total pig. Reward the behavior of this animal being quiet, right? In the minute he's quiet, you come in. Now, how do you do that? Don't leave him alone for any, any more than a minute or two. It's, you know, and then you progress over time. There are such things as busy toys. Busy toys are toys that you can stuff with, with, Edibles, right? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes we use peanut butter. It's not the best for dogs. But anything that is like a cream type deal, they've got lots of dog spreads you can put inside of them. Um, but the idea is you, you give it to them. You let them be busy with something different than getting all excited and, and harassing, you know, your 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 doors and everything else that he might be doing. So uh, that will buy you enough time to be able to get back. Right? So you give them this, they're going to be busy for five to ten minutes while they're licking this, this cool toy. And then you get back afterwards uh, while they're still doing this. By the way, if you're in the room, that toy should not be with them. Okay, that, that toy should never be. A busy toy should never be with a dog while you are there. It should only be available when you are not in the house. So as soon as you come in, you collect all the toys, you preload them, get them ready. Do not give them to the dog unless you're walking out, okay? The uh, other couple of tips is stop your long goodbyes. I'd be willing to bet that you have a long, drawn-out goodbye with your dog. Please stop that as soon as possible, okay? You're just building anxiety right before you leave. Don't do that. The other is stop long hellos, okay? No one questions that you love your dog. Just do it quietly. Come into the house and ignore them for the first 10, 15, 20 seconds. Just do your thing, okay? The same thing when you leave. Ignore them for the first 20 or the, the you know, 20, 30 seconds leading to you leaving. Don't make a big deal out of coming or going to your house and your dog won't either. So anyway, that should help, I hope. Um, go at it. Try it. Give us some status in the future. I love hearing feedback afterwards. Mr. Producer. All right. So here's a fun one. What yeah. is your favorite part about dog training? What is my favorite part? Wow. Uh, you know, the, my favorite part is that dogs get it. Okay, and uh, I hate to say this because now I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of feedback that is probably going to be negative, but um, dogs we train that I'm involved with totally get it. Uh, sometimes I, I, you know, spent much more time with a human trying to get them to get it, right? But the dogs get it, and it's kind of fun to do. I, I get immediate response. We all do. That's why we do this. You know, you do something, and we immediately get a response out of this animal. That is cool. I mean, it, it, it empowers you. It makes you feel like you're getting somewhere and especially if you're dealing with behaviors that are annoying to the to the owners it is really cool to be able to fix those so anyway just the dog response is why i do it that's that's my favorite part of it cool who asked that question it didn't leave a name it's yeah. anonymous wow that's a good question um dog man my dog is a two-year-old boxer that has always had aggression issues with other people okay Growls and barks at them if they get too close to me, Got or it. sometimes uh, even if they look at me. Okay. It's only growled at me once when mm. I forced her off the bed so I could change the sheets. Uh, it <laughs> seems to be protecting me, which I find cute, but my friend thinks she needs help. 
I respect your opinion. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Um, well, you may not respect my opinion after I'm done here. Uh, so your friends are right. Okay, I'm sorry, but your friends are right. Um, there is an issue and we need to fix it. You, there's two things that uh, James read there that that get my uh, get my goat going. Okay, one of them is that, yes, the dog is assaulting. Even it may be air assault, I don't know, but he's assaulting, barking, growling, carrying on to people that you know. These are friends to your circle. The other is that, He's only assaulted you once, or he's only growled at you once. I call that an assault, by the way. He's only growled at you once, which now means to me that he's done it to not only the outside circle, but the inside circle. So there are some issues going on, and both these issues are a little bit differently, in my opinion. Okay, not seeing the dog is hard to tell. But any dog that growls and barks at their own people, it, and I'm not talking play bark. I'm talking serious bark. Uh, in the term, I think he read early was growl. Any dog that is growling at you or has growled at you, it's a lack of respect. Okay, something is going on. Um, so we need to get on top of it from an alpha perspective. Okay, um, you need to be bigger, you need to be stronger. This is not about abuse. This is not about anything more than you doing your homework with this animal. And we can show you how to do it. Lots of people can show you how to do it. But really, it's about doing some strict obedience with the dog, making sure he understands that you are a boss, right? That's all there is to it. Again, no pain, no suffering. It's not. That's not what I am preaching. I am simply preaching that you get above this dog and that you are the superior being that we're supposed to be, okay? Um, so that's one. The fact that he is uh, growling at other people, uh, look, growls typically are a sign of fear, okay? I uh, would have to look at the dog and make sure that's the case. But when a dog starts growling and you see the hackles get up and get bigger, those are signs of fear. Those are not signs of protection. So you mentioned, oh, you know, he's protecting me and that's kind of cute, I think is what I heard. I, I don't I don't buy that with a little bit I, I hear right now. I really think that this might be a fear-based issue. Uh, regardless though, regardless, it should not be tolerated and that, you know, we need to put a plan together. It all depends on how, you know, to what severity this is happening and whether or not we think this dog is going to move on to an assault, right? An assault meaning is he taking the next step ever in the future? Uh, those are kind of dangerous things and they need to be visited. Okay. We need, we need to talk about this. So, uh, do consult, consult with a pro. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that could get out of control. I don't want to say that it will because it's, it's kind of short-sighted of me without really seeing the animal. So uh, get it looked at. But the issue of this dog growling at you, a different issue. That's not fear. That is just a lack of respect. And it needs to be reestablished. And the fact he's doing it with you, he may very well do it with other members of the family. Maybe a younger member, like I, we were just answering a question of someone else earlier. Uh, who knows what's going on? But there's there's something going on there that needs to be fixed. And it typically starts with the owner. So this is the part where you now get to harass me and put bad comments. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's all I got on that. <laughs> James, what else do we have? All right. One more question here. Um, we have a person with a... A large dog, large mixed breed dog that okay. um, continues to jump on them whenever they come into the house, knocks them over, cool. kids are f afraid of them. <laughs> How can they get on top of the jumping? Okay. So the dog is jumping on them when the dog goes in the house or? Yeah. When the okay. dog comes in from outside and, and uh -huh. whenever they come in to greet the dog. Got it. Okay, so uh, not enough information to know something, and I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to touch on this subject here, and that is, if this is a dog, if this is a dog that spends a lot of time outside, meaning it's just an outside dog primarily, and he comes in to say his hellos every now and then, or you go outside to say your hellos with him every now and then, you're going to have more of this jumping behavior than it different dog than a dog that spends a lot of time with their humans. Now, that's not to say that a dog that spends a lot of time with their humans doesn't jump from people. That's just bad behavior. But dogs that spend a lot of time alone, they have no other choice. They don't see you. They don't spend a lot of time with you. Anytime they see you, they're going to jump out of their skin to say hello, right? Sounds cute. Sounds kind of cool. But, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, it's just bad behavior. So, I'm going to tackle the answer in both ways. One is, if this dog's not spending a lot of time with you and he's really an outside dog, then you need to reverse that. You need to spend some time. Most of the reasons why people do this is because the dog is out of control or he's got bad obedience. So get on top of him, right? He'll sit down, stay, come. My gosh, it's simple stuff. Anybody can teach you that. We can teach you that. Uh, heck, you can just watch one of our videos and get that, okay? The point is, Get on top of this animal when it comes to the simple commands. Repeat them, repeat them, repeat them. You're going to get to the point where, hey, this guy's allowed into the house. The minute he's allowed into the house, those jumping behaviors are going to stop. Not 
completely, but they're going to get better. Uh, let me answer the other question differently. Okay, this is a dog that does spend a lot of time with you guys in the house, but every time he sees you guys, you know, he gets friendly. Okay, so again, one is get on top of all the obedience on the dog so he knows how this is work. And two, start working on this off command. Off should be all four legs on the ground, right? Not this jumping behavior that will drive people insane. Uh, a jumping dog is going to knock you down. It's going to knock grandma down. It's going to scratch people. It's just going to ruin clothing. I guess you know that because you're in the middle of it. But we need to get on top of that. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. We even have a video on it that is called a jumping challenge. Go to our, our YouTube channel and go pull it. Um, and it gives you seven, eight different ways of doing it. One of the most productive ones, in our opinion, is when the dog jumps on you, grab those front legs and just hold on to him. Just sell yourself on the fact that he wanted to jump, right? So if he does, hang on to those front paws and just, you know, keep him there. Uh, don't put pressure on, just hang on to them, right, firmly. What's going to happen is this dog is going to start dancing with you. They're going to start pulling back and forth. They want off. Uh, continue to hang on, okay? Hang on to another three, four seconds after he's dancing with you. And when you do let go, say the off command, and then wait and see what happens, okay? Uh, most of them will not jump again. And if that is the case, then you get on one knee and start praising his animal and tell him good off. If he does jump again, grab a hold of those legs and repeat the, the procedure. Continue to repeat this until he chooses to not jump on you. When he chooses to not jump, you get on your knees and you praise good off. Teach this off command. It's a really productive uh, command. Um, it, it's easy to teach and, and the dog will get it. There's six, seven other methods out there. Uh, they're easy to do. Just you know, watch the video. It's, it's good productive stuff to do. So anyway, good luck with it. Status it next time, whenever, whenever you can. That would be good information to, to have. So... Mr. James, what do you think? It's time. It's time. Wow, it's time. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, we do appreciate you guys, all of you, tuning in to Ask the Dog Man. We appreciate the fact that you took time today at 12.30. We did it at 12.30 on purpose just to see, can people free up their lunch hours? This is a better time. We're really experimenting times, if you haven't, if you haven't noticed. Uh, remember the announcement earlier, we're looking to hire two trainers. So please help us out. If you know somebody that's got the skills or wants the skills, uh, have them give us a call. Okay. We'd love to talk to them. If you have the skills, we'd love to talk to you. Just, uh, just remember that, uh, you know, we, we hire to keep, okay. We hire people indefinitely. It's, these are not temporary positions. So if we did not get to your question today, then we're really sorry. We'll make sure to respond in a comment section and give you some directions so you know what to do next. We'll be back again in two weeks, which is going to be April 24th. We're going to try again at 1230 and see if we can generate some more interest. Um, so there you have it. We've answered some of your questions. We get to ask you just one question today. And really, I want to know whether or not we should continue to do this every two weeks or should we do it weekly? Give us some feedback when you get a chance. Okay. That's something that uh, we've been bouncing around back and forth in here, but we really, um, you know, haven't decided. So anyway, uh, if you like the segment, share it, tell your friends, watch it again, uh, do whatever's necessary. That's, that's all we ask. It's just a little like and a little share. It goes a long way with us. So, this is Angel Soriano, a.k.a. Dogman, barking back at you. You asked, we answered. <laughs>